It's taken its own sweet time coming, but finally there is a family-oriented version of the new Mini. That behind me is the new five-door. The Cooper S gets a four-cylinder engine with a twin-scroll turbo. That means it spins out 189 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque at just 1,250 RPM. That banishes turbo lag and it gives it a run to 100K of 6.9 seconds when it's teamed with a six-bean manual. Now, for the shiftless, there is an automatic option. This Mini Cooper S comes with three driving modes. Eco, forget it, it just softens everything way too much. Mid and Sport then ramp everything up so you get a much crisper response to a deep stab at the gas pedal. The other thing it does, it rev matches when you downshift. So when you're heading into a corner, the engine ends up at perfect RPM and you clip the apex and away you go. There's an impishness to the way a Mini drives that very few cars can replicate. It really does come together very nicely. You can drive the tyres off it and it still comes back for more, which puts a huge smile on the driver's face. The other thing, it even makes grocery shopping fun. It's kind of like the story of the three bears. The original new Mini, well, it was just a little too small. The Countryman, well, just a little too big. This new five-door with its 73 millimeter stretch in the wheelbase brings more space, but it handles just like its smaller sibling. So it means it's a real Mini. For a city-dwelling family of four, it's ideal. It's now been more than a decade since the new generation Mini first arrived and it's been reimagined with five doors instead of three. Depending on your point of view, this will either be highly controversial or could make perfect sense. If you're worried about outgrowing your beloved Mini hatch, then you've just been thrown a lifeline. The whole car has been stretched by 16 centimetres, meaning two adults can now sit comfortably in the back, while the boot is also considerably larger. But the Mini has always been about driving fun, so has this now been compromised? Let's find out. So, oh, this car certainly hasn't lost its sense of fun. It might be longer and heavier than its Mini name suggests, but incredibly sharp steering does the instant feeling that it has a real sense of fun. It also has a very snappy gear change which automatically revs the throttle on downshifts with a barrage of exhaust pops for good measure. There's also an optional automatic gearbox but we wouldn't really recommend it unless you live in a congested city because it does rob the car of some of its driver engagement. Turn into a corner and there's almost no body roll and you can feel all four tyres loading up with grip. In this Cooper S model, there's also a sport mode for maximum go-kart feel, as Mini calls it. But we think it actually makes the suspension almost too stiff, so you might want to reserve it for track days. One and Cooper models come fitted with smaller wheels and ride more comfortably. And while no Mini can act like a Rolls Royce, it is settled and comfortable on the motorway. In terms of petrol engines, the one comes fitted with a 1.2 litre with 101 horsepower, while the sportier Cooper gets a 1.53 cylinder petrol with 134 bhp, and that's good for 0 to 62 in around 8 seconds. And it's actually the Cooper that we think might be the pick of the range, because it can also return around 60 mpg. This car is the petrol Cooper S with 189 horsepower. So it feels hot hatch quick, but still returns a respectable 48 mpg, if you can resist putting your foot down. If you'd rather have a diesel, there's a 1D, a Cooper D and the hot Cooper SD, with power ranging from 101 to 168 bhp, an economy from 69 
all the way up to 80 mpg. The latest Mini still has a very distinctive cabin with a unique view out of its small upright windscreen and this dinner plate sized pod at the top of its centre console. However, this is no longer a speedometer, instead it now houses the infotainment system or radio, while the speedo has moved to a more conventional position above the steering wheel. Controls for the electric windows are now found on the doors, so you no longer have to go looking for a toggle switch on the centre console. The rear doors might be quite small, but once you're sat in the back you'll soon realise there's much more knee room and headroom than the three door, making it quite a comfortable place to sit. You wouldn't necessarily want to be in the middle though, because it's very narrow and there's also this large transmission tunnel to deal with. Step round to the boot and the five door starts to make even more sense. There's 67 litres of extra space and it's well thought out the split level boot floor allowing for a deeper space or for valuables to be kept hidden. This Mini might not be as dainty as it once was, but the five door is much better suited to growing families and costing just £600 more than the smaller three door, it also represents pretty good value for money. On top of that, its extra practicality hasn't made it any less fun to drive. Some purists may sneer at its size, but we think most customers will simply be happy they can swap into a bigger Mini if they need to. But what do you think of the Mini 5 door? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. To watch reviews of the Mini's rivals, click on the links at the end of the video.